All right, we're back on this Monday evening with a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. Hope you had a good weekend, pretty good weekend weather-wise. Still a little bit hazy with that wildfire smoke in the uh, in the air on Saturday, but that thinned out on Sunday and led to a pretty much a fantastic end of the weekend, including uh, the sunset. Thanks to Stephanie, who always sends us great pictures of the various lakes at sunset. Uh, this time she was at uh, Berlin Lake and caught this great shot Sunday evening. Don't forget to uh, submit any weather pictures to us, weatherpics, P-I-C-S, at WFMJ.com. You can submit them directly on the Storm Tracker 21 app and hit me up on Instagram for all sorts of cool weather-related pictures. Let me stop the loop here so we have some fresh data. This is uh, not the mainland U.S., but this is, of course, Puerto Rico, which was you know, devastated, to be honest, over the weekend by tremendous flooding. Now, this is a classic example of you don't need a Category 3 or 4 hurricane to cause huge problems. This was a Category 1 all weekend, Fiona, but it wasn't moving very fast, and it brought tremendous amounts of rain to Puerto Rico and enough wind to cause the entire island to lose power at times on Sunday. Now, good news and bad news with Fiona this evening. As of the 5 p.m. advisory, the bad news is it's, it's strengthening. It's up to a Category 2 now, and it looks pretty healthy on the uh, infrared satellite picture. you got a pinhole eye now, and this is heading into a pretty favorable environment. Uh, the good news is it's, it's moving, not very fast, but it's moving to the northwest at 10. So it's slowly but surely getting out of Puerto Rico's hair, and uh, Hispaniola uh, will see improving conditions slowly over the next 12 to 18 hours. Now, as this continues marching to the north, uh, enough of a relaxation of the wind shear aloft and plenty of warm water out here, of course, that uh, we'll probably see a Category 4 by Wednesday. This is the Bahamas over here. This little dot appears Bermuda. This may be another close call for that little island um, by uh, Thursday. But for the mainland U.S., no problems other than uh, some high surf. Myrtle Beach, Virginia Beach, down to Hilton Head, down towards uh, Florida as well. The other kind of uh, big kind of national weather-ish or science uh, topic today. Uh, the big earthquake that happened this afternoon along the west coast of Mexico, uh, magnitude 7.5, a real big one. And seismic waves travel all over the earth. And even though, of course, we didn't feel this earthquake here locally, our local seismographs did. I posted on social media this afternoon a little uh, uh, hello, hello, hello recorder. I think that's how you say it, of, the, uh, of Penn State uh, Shenango campus. They have one of those and uh, uh, shows the you know kind of movement of that as the seismic waves rolled underneath us from this huge earthquake on the west coast of Mexico. All right, we had some thunderstorms, some loud ones. First thing this morning and another round of downpours in spots this afternoon. Here's a look at our rain gauge network. Now, all these numbers are pretty modest, but of course we don't have rain gauges everywhere. And in between some of these rain gauges, we had some pretty healthy totals today. Some radar estimates here along the 224 corridor in Mahoning County around the Canfield area and also over towards Poland. Uh, an inch to an inch and a half worth of rain, pretty common. A couple of hot spots over in northwestern, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, Lawrence County as well. <clears throat> some radar estimates over towards Pulaski, an inch and a half, maybe even two inches in some spots from those downpours uh, in, that came in two rounds early today. But the radar is quiet as of this recording, 713. We're going to be dry from here on out tonight. Boy, it's muggy outside. Dew points are well up into the 60s and lower 70s. Now, we do have a weak front crossing the area that will knock down the dew points somewhat tonight and into tomorrow. I don't think it'll be as muggy on Tuesday, but then those dew points will surge back in. Those higher dew points will surge back in on Wednesday, helping to fuel some late day thunderstorms. We'll talk about that momentarily. In the near term, watch for some fog tonight. Uh, long nights at this time of the year. Uh, we have dropping temperatures back to about the dew point tonight. We had some rain in spots today, and so the residual moisture near the ground, all that's a pretty good recipe for some fog. We're in the fog season. Uh, August through October is t tends to be our foggiest time of the year with the longer nights, and so watch for reductions in visibility tomorrow morning. Otherwise, tomorrow's a real winter. Uh, mostly sunny skies and a little more comfortable than today. Our next chance for rain is actually tomorrow night and Wednesday morning, but this is not kind of the main show. I could have analyzed a warm front on this on this map for Wednesday morning. This is that dew point surge, those higher dew points coming back in, maybe accompanied by a shower or storm, kind of like we had first thing this morning. Maybe not as widespread as first thing this morning, but the day could start with a little wet weather on Wednesday. Then the sun's going to come out. It's going to turn hot and muggy. A classic setup for a late season thunderstorm outbreak. 
late in the afternoon and especially early in the evening on Wednesday, we've got instability, we've got heat, we've got humidity, we've got wind shear, a lot of wind energy aloft, changing of the wind direction and speed with height. Um, and all that means that uh, this will be a day that we have to stay weather aware, I think, towards the end of the day on Wednesday. And then whoosh, talk about a dramatic change. Uh, we're going to see a high in the mid-80s Wednesday and lower 60s on Thursday. We'll be in the same neighborhood on Friday. SPC, the Storm Prediction Center, with their day three outlook today, did highlight a slight risk, two on that one to five scale. Uh, that kind of includes the I-90 corridor up towards uh, Detroit, catches Cleveland, catches Erie, catches Buffalo, the rest of the region in the one on that one to five scale. Don't split hairs too much here. It's an elevated risk everywhere. It just maybe is a little bit higher uh, around Lake Erie and Lake Ontario as well. I guess I wouldn't be surprised if when this becomes the day two outlook, in the middle of the night tonight, uh, the slight risk has dropped even a little farther to the south and east to catch uh, more of northeast Ohio and uh, northern Pennsylvania as well. Either way, we're going to have to pay attention to the weather for a handful of hours Wednesday evening. I think the best window here is something like 5 to 9 p.m. on Wednesday. All the modes of severe weather will be a possibility. I don't have isolated tornado on here yet, but I have a sneaking suspicion we'll add that, that to the graphic tomorrow. I think there's a good amount of wind uh, shear aloft that uh, something that we can't rule out is maybe an isolated tornado, but by far and away, number one risk would be just plain old wind damage. And don't forget, wind is wind. A 70 mile per hour wind gust, whether it's from a tornado or not, is still going to cause problems, very similar problems. You don't need a tornado to cause a lot of wind problems, and uh, could be one of those situations on Wednesday. Hail could be a possibility in those storms as well. I mentioned the change. Wow. This is dramatic. 86 on Wednesday, 63 Thursday, 62 Friday. That being said, we'll be dry for high school football yet again this week. It'll be a crisp and chilly Friday evening. Easily our coolest Friday evening of the season so far for football. The weekend starts out dry. Maybe there's some rain coming our way Sunday as temperatures briefly rebound. So unlike last week, we actually have some weather to talk about this week. So you know we'll have you covered here on Weather for Weather Geeks on the Storm Tracker 21 app and on 21 News as well. Looking forward to talking with you again on Tuesday as we update the severe weather situation uh, the potential, anyway, coming our way on Wednesday. We'll see you then.